Welcome to How to Make Cider at Home, sponsored by thegiftofwine.com. Step 1. Get some apples. You'll need about 18 pounds of apples for every gallon that you make. Step 2. Wash the apples. Give the apples a good clean. Remove any dead leaves, any twigs or any mouldy apples from the bunch. Step 3. Pulp the apples. I'm using the homemade scratter. There's more details about this on my website. The pulped apples fall into the brewing bucket below. Here you can see the pulp. There's plenty of juice there already. Pour any juice out through a strainer. It'll help save time later on when pressing the pulp. Step 4. Press the pulp. I've taken some lace curtains, cut them up into squares and use them over an old uh, sandwich tub. Place the pulp in the container and keep adding until full. Once full, press it down and then wrap the lace curtain to make a packet. Place several of these packets on top of each other depending on how large your press is. Here I'm pressing the apples. I'm using a bottle jack and a homemade press more details about this on the website. As the jack extends, juice comes out of the drain at the hole at the bottom of the tin and fills the brewing bucket. After several pressings I've got a bucket full of juice. There's about five gallons here. I then strain the juice through a sieve to remove any small bits of apple that have escaped through the, cur the net curtain. As you can see there's quite a bit of solid matter within the juice. Step 5. Make a yeast start. Here I'm adding a teaspoon of sugar to some warm water. Make sure it's no hotter than 20 degrees C or else you'll kill the yeast. Dissolve the sugar in the water. And once dissolved, add a teaspoon full of yeast. This is general purpose wine yeast. Make sure it's dissolved and then you'll have to leave it for an hour but first cover the top with cling film to protect it from bacteria. After about an hour the yeast starts fermenting and here you can see the bubbles coming up from the bottom as the sugar is converted into alcohol.
Step 6. Measure the specific gravity. This is to see how much sugar is in the juice. You may need to add more sugar if to get the desired alcohol strength. Step 7. Add the yeast to the juice. This is the starter that I prepared earlier. Get all the yeast mixed in and then tip it into the juice. Step 8. Primary fermentation. This after about a day the yeast started working and you can see it bubbling away within the fruit juice. This all takes place within the brewing bucket. Step 9. Secondary fermentation. This is where the fruit juice and the yeast is transferred to demijohns. The fermentation at this stage is a lot slower. If you did it to start off with it, it just bubble out through the airlocks and make a complete mess. And this takes place after about four days. Firstly, clean and sterilize the demijohns. Then siphon off the juice from the fermentation bucket into the demijohns. Add the airlocks. Make sure the water in the airlocks is sterilised water. There's more about that on the website using uh, Camden tablets. The airlocks allow gas to escape from the fermentation process and stop bacteria getting back into the fruit juice. Here we have a couple of bottles fermenting away. You have to leave it like this for about three or four weeks until fermentation has stopped. Step 10. Bottling. After several weeks, fermentation has ceased and the cider has become clear. It's ready for bottling now. Use Camden tablets to sterilise your bottles and only use bottles that are suitable, suitable for pressurised liquids. Here I've added a Camden tablet to a bottle and I'm going to rinse it thoroughly making sure the liquid comes into contact with all parts of the bottle. Add a teaspoon of sugar to each bottle. This will make the cider slightly fizzy when you remove the top for drinking. Insert a siphon tube into the demijohn. siphon off the cider into your bottles. There we have it, the finished product. If you'd like further information on cider making, visit my website www.thegiftofwine.com